Of course I can never just make one decision. I have to pick multiple books for all the different questions, but hey, that means more options for you. So I take that as a win. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. My name is Kat and we talk about books here. I am really excited today because I am doing the book recommendations tag and I was tagged by the lovely Kat over at Kat's Fields Notes. I'm so excited to do this tag. I honestly was gonna skip this one entirely because I was like, I don't like recommending books. I get really in my head, I get nervous, but I am really excited to share some of the books that I picked for these questions. So without further ado, let's just dive right in and get these questions answered. Third. The very first question is a book you tell people is your favorite. For this one, I feel like it's a tie. If you've been watching my channel, I don't think you'll be surprised at all by these two picks because I feel like I talk about them all the time. But the two that I picked for this category is Maud Martha by Gwendolyn Brooks and Fight Night by Miriam Taves. I had to pick these two. I feel like I'm always thinking about these and whenever I get asked, this is like where my brain goes immediately. Fight Night, I just absolutely loved this. Miriam Taves did such a great job with humor and I don't know this book is just really sweet and funny I feel like I did not make it through a single page without laughing so this one definitely makes that list we're basically following Swiv and she is now homeschooled because something happened with one of her classmates so now she has to stay home she's suspended and her grandma is basically doing her lessons with her it's a family of all women her mom is pregnant currently there's no dad in the picture and we just follow these women and it's such a sweet book I loved it I'm not gonna shut up about this ever this is definitely a favorite book of mine and don't be shocked if you see this one in other categories because it's gonna be in other categories and then of course Maud Martha I absolutely love this book it's a tiny book it was so beautiful so sweet I absolutely loved reading about Martha basically we're just following Martha as she's growing up pretty much because we start following her when she's younger and she's living in Chicago and what it's like for her as a black woman growing up because I don't remember what year this takes place in okay so it takes place on the south side of Chicago in the 1940s so it's like little vignettes of her life through each of the chapters and I just have absolutely love this book. I'm not gonna shut up about this one either. So I feel like these are the two. I don't think anyone's shocked that I picked these. Also, I wanted to say for each of these books, I don't think I'm gonna do like too much of a description just because I have so many books to go through and so many questions. So I don't want this video to be too long, but I'll try and give like reasons on why I'm picking them and maybe like a tiny little sneak peek. Question number two is a book that's your guilty pleasure. I had a really hard time with this one because I don't necessarily, I couldn't think of anything that was like a guilty pleasure, but I will say some like genres that I feel like aren't books that I normally read, but I have been lately, or if I ever need a break from like literary fiction or heavier topics, I've been finding myself gravitating a lot more towards sci-fi books. Recently one that I can think of is Claire and the Sun, like I really loved that one. And also graphic novels. I feel like this year I've been reading a lot more graphic novels than I have in previous years. So I wouldn't say that's necessarily a guilty pleasure. I openly talk about those, but it's definitely a genre that I don't typically read or I mean haven't in the past. Maybe I'm becoming a sci-fi girly. I feel like Ivana has been telling me that I'm becoming a sci-fi girly so that might be the case <laughs> that might be what's happening okay so question number three is a book that everyone else loved and you didn't I have a few for this category so the first one is everyone in this room Will Someday Be Dead by Emily Austin and I don't know if I just went into it really hyping it up to myself where I was like this is gonna be like my top read like favorite read ever because when I read it I feel like it was I don't know if it was the pacing that didn't work for me because the writing was good and I related to the character a lot I don't think it was that I think maybe it was the pacing this is also actually one that I really would like to give another shot because I feel like I just hear so many good things and I know Emily Austin is coming out with a new book I'm really interested in reading that one even though this one I feel like was mid for me but I don't know I feel like I need to try it again maybe it was like wrong time wrong book kind of a situation so I might give that one another chance another one and I don't know if everyone loves this one but it feels like everyone loves this one but it's Bunny by Mona Awad that book I did not like I feel like I ended that book and I was like why that just like was not a book for me but I'm happy if you read Bunny by Mona Awad and absolutely loved it like so happy for you but for me 
yeah, it just did not work out. And the final book I want to put in this category is Q by Katherine Lacey. I feel like anyone I've seen that's read it for the most part has loved it. And I've read it once. I tried rereading it, but I stopped rereading it after like the first two pages. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the writing. I just like cannot vibe with it. And when I read it the first time, I remember like enjoying like the themes and what was kind of being discussed. But for some reason, the writing just was not was not working for me and I want to love this book so bad. It feels like a book that I would have loved but for some reason it just didn't work for me so Pew by Catherine Lacey. I do have another Catherine Lacey book that I want to read. I don't remember the name of it but I have a copy of it and I'll put it on the screen over here. I bought it even though I didn't love Pew because I think I just want to love Catherine Lacey so Pew I'm sorry I want to love you but uh, for some reason we just don't work for some reason question number four is a book you read the fastest and I was sitting thinking about this and I was like I don't remember I have a horrible memory I'm not gonna remember what book I read the fastest but thankfully Storygraph has this feature that I was able to kind of categorize all my books by like the speed of a book and then I was able to see like oh this book I read in one day so that book goes to Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin I read this in one sitting it's one of those books where I feel like you should read it in one sitting and it's pretty fast paced anyways if you look at the page it's pretty spaced out this one I very much so enjoyed I've talked about it I want to read more Samantha Schweblin I tried to read Little Eyes when we went on our little reading retreat I didn't vlog it but Kat did and I think Yvonne is gonna post a vlog as well so I'll include their videos but I was trying to read Little Eyes when we went on our retreat and it was I was getting too spooked like I could not so I'm gonna read that one now that I'm back home <laughs> I'll read Little Eyes, but this one was so good. I think definitely reading it in one sitting is the best way to do it. Cause yeah, it just really adds to the fever dream element as you're reading it. And if you were to put it down, I just don't know if it would work as well. So yeah, I'm putting Fever Dream as my fastest read and it really was, it was a super fast read. Question number five is a book that deserves more hype. And I have two for this category. One of them is definitely an older book, so it might not even necessarily be that it hasn't been hyped up. It could have been hyped up when it first came out, but I feel like I don't really see people talk about this one and I really enjoyed it. It feels weird to say enjoyed because the topic of it was very heavy and really eye-opening for me when I read it, but it's Nothing to Envy by Barbara Demick. And this is basically we're following I think it's like six or seven people who are defectors of North Korea and we're hearing what it was like for them when they were living in North Korea and this was a book where I was just kind of shocked this was definitely eye-opening so if this is something that you're not really familiar with or you'd want to read more about I definitely recommend this one even though this is nonfiction, I didn't want to put this one down and I think I read this one in 2017 maybe i read this one before i was on bookstagram before i was on booktube this one was definitely one of those books that kind of like got me back into reading i don't really see a lot of people talking about it so i thought i would put it in this category i'm sure when it came out it had a lot of hype maybe i don't know i don't actually know it was a great read for me to learn a bit more about north korea and what was going on with the regime the next book that i want to put in this category i think is super underhyped and it's funeral for flaca this one i've only ever seen Ivana talk about. She is the sole reason why I even picked this up. I haven't really seen anyone else talk about this, but this is just a collection of essays. It is so good. I feel like Emily is around my age, so definitely can relate to a lot of the music that she was listening to when she was growing up. There's a lot of humor sprinkled in here, as well as like some heavier topics. She's a Latina author, and yeah, I very much so related to a lot of these essays, so I don't even remember where I got my copy because I feel like I don't often see it, but it was so good. I definitely recommend this one if you're looking for a collection of essays. I loved it. The next question is a book that is becoming a TV or movie. There's a few that I have for this category. I'm trying to think. I feel like I read Sorrow and Bliss, but I don't, do I own it? I don't think I own Sorrow and Bliss. Wow. Okay. So the first one I guess I'll say is Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. That one's apparently going to be adapted. I absolutely loved that book. It definitely gave me Fleabag vibes, which I love Fleabag so much. So I'm very excited to see what they end up doing with that one. The next one is The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filia. And I'm so excited for this. This was such a great short story collection. Probably my top short story collection that I've ever read. I had to pick this one because I'm 
I'm so excited to see how that adaptation comes out. And the next one that I wanted to share is Crying in H Mart. I absolutely loved this one. It's by Michelle Zahner. She's from the band Japanese Breakfast. This is her memoir talking about the grief of her mother passing. This one's being adapted into a, I think it's a film. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a film. And I'm so excited to see this one. I think it's gonna make me sob. I feel like everyone's probably seen this book or heard about this book already, but I had to include this one. The next question is a book that you have reread the most. When I was thinking about this question, I was kind of stuck because I don't often reread books. I don't know why I have a very hard time wanting to pick up a book and reread it, but I have reread one book twice and that's Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Tushimira. Ooh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I tried looking it up. I'm trying. This is one that I've reread twice. And honestly, I could see myself rereading this one several times over and over. I think this would be a really great fall read. It was really sweet. So definitely recommend this one if you haven't read it already. The cover too. Did I include this one in my book cover tag? I don't think I did, but it's beautiful. So I messed that one up. This definitely should have been included in that one. Okay, question number eight is a book from a genre you don't typically read from. I'm gonna say two for this one. First one is Claire and the Sun by Kashio Ishiguro. I read that one very recently. I think I fin that's the most recent book that I finished. I haven't talked about it yet. I did mention it in my most recent reading vlog, but that one was so good. And that's more like sci-fi literary, but I'm so glad that I finally read it. I want more books like that. So if you know of any, let me know. Another book that I wanted to include is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee, and this one is more like historical fiction, which I don't typically read historical fiction, not for any particular reason. I do enjoy historical fiction, but I just find myself not really gravitating towards that genre. But this one I absolutely loved. This is a generational story, which is also something that I really love to read about. I'm sure everyone has already recommended Pachinko to you, but if you haven't read it yet, this is me, I'm telling you, go read it, it's so good. Okay, question number nine is a book that deserves all the hype it gets. And I'm kind of cheating because I haven't finished this one yet, but, and I don't even have the book with me because it's in a different room, but I have the book cover, so I'll share that. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. I am still not done with it, so I don't fully know if I recommend it yet, but so far, I'm absolutely loving this book and I could definitely see it being a favorite. This one might live up to the hype. I'll keep you posted in a wrap up if it's true or not. Wanted to just quickly mention that one. Okay, but some other ones that I do recommend and I do think really live up to the hype. The first one I wanna mention is Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. This one absolutely blew me away. I love this one so much. I know that this one can be a little bit mixed, like I feel like some people really love the ending or they hate the ending so keep that in mind but this one really worked for me we're following Miri and Leah and I think it's Leah yeah so Leah goes down into a submarine something happens and she comes back and Miri is like something's up she doesn't know what but something's up and we kind of follow that and learn more about what happened in the submarine I thought this one was so beautiful I would reread this one in a heartbeat it was so good Another one that I want to include is Bliss Montage by Ling Ma. I haven't had a chance to talk about this one, but I recently read it and I really loved the short story collection. There's a plane. This one was so good. I absolutely loved all of the stories. It felt so like, I don't know how to explain it. It felt like real. Like it felt like these stories could be real, but there was just like a tiny element that would throw it off a little bit and be like, oh, okay, no, this is definitely not real necessarily, but, but it was so good. Absolutely loved it. So yeah, bliss montage. Another one that I think deserves all the hype is Dogs of Summer by Andrea Abreu. This book, I loved it so much. I feel like for a little while, this book was everywhere. I feel like a lot people included it in their book cover tag and I mean it's absolutely beautiful it should be but also the story of it I loved it so much I know that this one might also be a little bit mixed but this one really worked for me I had a lot of fun with it so yeah dogs of summer one that I don't currently own the copy of because I got it from the library was all my rage by Saba Tahir that book was so good. I went into it a little like, mm, we'll see because it is YA and I don't typically read YA. I know I'm not really the target audience for it anymore, 
but that book was so good. The topics that it was covering, the writing, the conversations between all the characters, it was just so good. My top YA that I've ever read, probably. It was definitely a favorite of last year. Definitely recommend it. Question number 10 is a book that you usually recommend when giving recommendations. And for me, I feel like the, the one that I'm able to recommend the most, because I feel like a wide range of people might enjoy this book, is Fight Night by Miriam Taves. I won't talk about it too much, but I just feel like this one could really work. It's really funny. It's really heartwarming. And I feel like I could just see a lot of people really enjoying this one. So... I had to pick this one again. Question number 11 is a book that has your favorite characters. Of course, I have so many to choose from, but in Secret Lives of Church Ladies, in the story, the short story called Snowfall, Rhonda and Erletta, I absolutely loved them. Had to include them. I loved Cara Romero and How Not to Drown in a Glass of Water. I listened to it on audio as well and just like listening to the, the narrator. Ooh. She did such a good job. Oh, I didn't really give a synopsis of this, but basically we're following Cara Romero. She's lost her job and she has to go to these like job interview things where she's like meeting with like a, a counselor or something like that. I'm so sorry. I'm like butchering this right now, but we're just following her and it's you're just getting the perspective of, of Cara. You don't actually hear the counselor at any point. So she's just like talking to her and you can kind of guess some of the questions that the counselor is asking. Really loved this one. I talked about this in my mid-year freakout tag, but I loved the unnamed narrator in the seas. She's a 19 year old girl who falls in love with a marine and her father tells her that she's a mermaid and she believes him but i absolutely loved the unnamed narrator in this i thought she was really sweet i wanted to protect her at all costs so i really loved her fight night again i loved swiv i loved the grandmother their relationship i loved the mom too i loved all of them the dynamic between the three different generations of women absolutely loved reading about loved those characters i know i also mentioned the friend in my mid-year freakout tag i also mentioned women talking so just wanted to quit quickly mention those here, but I didn't want to talk about them too much because I know I already talked about them in my mid-year freakout tag. So question 12 is a book you wish you could live in. For the most part, there's not many books that I actually want to live in because of what I read, but I will say I think it'd be cute to live in Fight Night and just like interact with the family. One that I'd love to live in, which is I feel like such a random pick, but thieves. I would love to live in this world. I think it's so cute. Like imagine if I was one of these cute little drawings. How precious would that be? And they just get up to shenanigans and I think it'd just be really cute. I'd probably be stressed because all the shenanigans they get into, but I think it'd be really fun. This is the world I would want to live in. Okay, so question number 13 is a book you thought you would hate but ended up loving. And I don't have the copy for this one because I got it from the library, but I have to say Writers and Lovers by Lily King. This is a book that I saw so many times and I was like, I'm not gonna read that. I wouldn't like this kind of book. The cover alone just kind of like put me off. I just assumed that it was something that I wouldn't enjoy. I don't typically read romance, so I thought it was just like a romance book and I put it off. But when I was on Bookstagram, I saw so many people that I felt like I had similar reading tastes to love this book. So I was like, okay, let me see what this book is about. And I read it and I really, really loved it. I really enjoyed the writing of it. And it was definitely one that I was putting off forever because I was like, it's not for me. It's not for me, <laughs> but it was so good. Question 14 is a book that made you cry. I actually don't remember if Fight Night made me tear up. Maybe it did, but I'm not gonna say that because I don't actually remember. So a book that made me sob was Crying in H Mart. Just talking about grief and her mother passing like that. Mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, that definitely got me. I was so nervous to read this one because of the topic that was going to be discussed. It was very hard for me to read. It definitely got me very emotional several times. So I have to give it to Crying in H Mart. I don't think that there's been any other book that has made me cry as much as this one. So this one takes the cake, but we do have some that almost got me to cry. The Friend, it almost got me. It almost got me. I thought it was going to get me more because this book is about our narrator and her friend commit suicide and now she has to take care of their dog. I thought it was just going to be really, 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 really hard for me, but I feel like the way that this is written, let it be a little bit further away. So talking about death more in like an academic way, but I thought it was going to get me a little bit more. There were some moments where I definitely was like, but didn't cry for this one, but it almost got me. It almost got me. And How Not to Drown in a Glass of Water by Andy Cruz. There's one specific page and sentence that 
got me to shed a tear and got me to feel some things. So I had to include this one as well. Oh my God, I cannot believe it. We are at the last question. I'm like getting through these questions. Question number 15 is a book you wish you could read for the first time. This one took me a little bit to think about because there wasn't necessarily a book in specific that I felt that way about, but I did think of two. I've already talked about them. But the first one is Dogs of Summer by Andrea Abreu. I just thought that the writing of this was so beautiful and like the styling for some of the chapters was really unique. So I really enjoyed it. I'd love to like relive it because I remember when I first read it, I was like, wait, what's going on? Like, this is so cool. So this is definitely one that I would love to just wipe my memory of and relive. And the final pick for my final question in this tag is The Lonely Castle in the Mirror. This one, I feel like there's a bit of like something that happens. And I feel like once you know about it, you know about it, like you'll never be able to forget that at all. So this is definitely one that I wish I could wipe my memory so I could go through and just relive it again and be shocked when I find that little bit of information, I have to say Lonely Castle in the Mirror. This is one that while I can reread it and while I did enjoy rereading it, I already knew. Like I already knew it was gonna happen. So it's a little bit different. If I was to pick one, it might be this one between Dogs of Summer and Lonely Castle in the Mirror. It might be this one. Wow, we did that. We did that. Those were all the questions. Those are all the books that I would recommend for all of those different categories. This was so much fun. Thanks again, Kat, for tagging me. I definitely was hesitant at first, like I said, but this was just so fun to look through my books. And that's the whole reason I started my channel. I love talking about books. And even if some of these were not your favorites and you hated, you know, that's fine. We all have our own opinions. We all have our own things that we look for when we're reading books and that's okay. That's me talking to me, getting myself comfortable with accepting that not everyone's gonna love every single book that you love. But yeah, this was so much fun. I hope maybe you got some new recommendations for some books that maybe you were thinking about reading and then now you really wanna read. I'd love to know if that's the case for any of these or if there's any books on here that you love or if there's any books on this that you would recommend because I'm always looking for book recommendations. I love Bookstagram, I love Booktube. That's my main source for finding out about books. So yeah, I'd love love to hear what you recommend as well. I'm going to be tagging some people down below in case you are also interested in doing the book recommendations tag. You are officially tagged so I'd love to see what you end up picking for this. If you do it, no pressure, but this was a lot of fun. So that's all I had for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. Thanks for watching and subscribing. I appreciate the heck out of all of you and I will see you in the next video. Bye.